Today, going to be painting this Fisher Wife from Reaper Bones. I'm inspired by this image of, I believe, Madame Eva from a D&D campaign, Curse of Strahd. So I'm going to be involving some of these colours. I'm actually working on colour theory. I still think that's a weak point for me. So I'm going to be involving purple in the two areas that we are painting today. And that is going to be the lower part of the dress and then the kind of shawl that she has around her shoulders. The purple is going to be the shadow or shaded area of each. But the purple on the lower part of the dress wasn't really dark enough so I've added some black just to bring that down. I'm not going over the entire base layer that I'd already just put down, I'm just adding this mix of dark purple black into the recessed areas. On this lower part I'm planning on working from purple uh, up blue and greens possibly. It's a very recessed area so there should be room for an awful lot of contrast, at least that's the hope, as well as ranging between the colours. So maybe pulling off some sort of pearlescent finish. So naturally we're going from the dark purple in the recesses, I'm using a brighter blue uh, as we get to the highlights, and then like I say I'll start transitioning into green. Just thinking about the volumes and the shapes, where the light would fall, where the shadows would be, and just very slowly working my way up. Uh, it's quite hard edges, so I should be able to do some edge highlighting as well, just to really push the contrast. I did work up into green, I found that the difference between the green and the blue wasn't really what I was looking for, so I'm now adding some yellow into the green just to really push the contrast as well as the tonal variation. And adding this yellow made the world of difference. I think there was a nice contrast before, but this definitely pushed it to another level. And here we go, here's the result. I think it's actually worked out quite nicely. You can't really see the purple, but I believe it's there, it's in spirit. Um, and going from the purple, the blue, the green, this yellowish green, really nice tonal contrast. So for the top area, like I say, I'm planning on starting from purple again, but we're going to go the other side of the rainbow now. So I'm going to be going through reds, oranges, maybe again pushing into yellow. So there'll be a match between the two in terms of both purples and yellows, possibly. Does that work? So starting with a darker purple tone, uh, this doesn't have anywhere near the depth of recess so I don't know how much contrast or colour and tonal variation I'm going to be able to add but let's find out. Once I've painted both of these areas I will then finish off the rest of the miniature and I think we'll come back later for some finer details again inspired by that picture that we saw at the beginning. I often use purple in the shaded areas of my reds, so that's not an uncommon thing for me to experiment with. The tassels on the end, I'm planning on having probably the brightest highlight. And so this is where we got to, so we have reds and oranges in the top part going out to yellow for the tassels. I think it's a nice end result, I'm more impressed with the lower area and the amount of tonal variation we got than the top area, but that's where we are. And so this is the end result of where we have those two materials painted, and this is the rest of the miniature painted off camera. Uh, so as you can see, when you paint the rest of the miniature, it all starts to come together, and it flows a bit better. I use purple in other areas again, so hopefully there's some sort of, not symmetry, but uh, kind of equilibrium amongst the miniature. And so this is where I'm coming back and doing some 
finer detail or uh, hand painting, whatever you want to call it. Freehand, that's what people like to call it, isn't it? So my plan is to do kind of a flowery effect, maybe like, like a meadow or something at the bottom. So I started with red dots. That didn't really pay out. Um, because when I started to do the green kind of stripes and threads and grasses and reeds and whatever you would call it, most of that was uh, removed, but I'm glad I did it because it does leave a level of depth. Then we go with red dots over the top. I thought that looked really cool, but maybe a bit messy at the bottom. So I added this red trim. The red trim kind of took over a little bit, but hey, that's why we experiment. And this is the end result. I'm very happy with how kind of saturated and colorful this miniature came out. I wasn't trying to copy anything, but like I say, that image was an inspiration in terms of maybe color schemes and that sort of thing. And I think we got this kind of cool miniature at the end of it. Let me know what you think, and until the next one, bye!